a couple of months ago, the people at Logitech and Tech360 sent me the Logitech MX3 mouse to see how it performed with the Apple experience. Uh, I thoroughly loved it. Um, it's my go-to driver now. So they go back to me, they said, hey, is there anything else you want to have a look at? I said, yeah, there is. I want to see what happens when I change my keyboard from the Apple keyboard to the Logitech MX keys. Before we begin, if you like videos like this, click the like button, subscribe to the channel so that you'll be informed whenever there's new content and it'll help us know that we're doing something that is appreciated. Now, the Logitech MX keys actually has a Mac configuration, including keys that actually make sense for a Apple user. Now, I appreciate this because I am an Apple user. I use Apple for my main driver for work but I do have a gaming uh, build, a, a Windows build just for gaming. Now, we'll get back into that later. But what's the difference between an Apple keyboard and a Logitech MX Keys keyboard? So we're going to go through this uh, sectionally, if you will. And I'm going to go through the build first. Now, the build of the Logitech MX Keys is actually on par, if not more luxurious than the Apple keyboard. The Apple keyboard has an aluminium uh, brushed uh, chassis with uh, white chiclet keys. Um, I got the version that is uh, wired uh, uh, because I wanted the uh, ability for the extra number pad at the side because I do a lot of uh, calculations as well. Now, the Logitech MX keys comes with that, right? Um, but it's it changed it up a little bit more. There, it's a slightly a little bit heavier, but that's because it is a Bluetooth keyboard. Now, I like Bluetooth a lot but i couldn't find an apple version with the number keypad with it so i had to get go with the wired version but now that i've tried the logitech mx keys i'm all in on bluetooth right uh because it saves me a lot of desk confusion um there is something about logitech hitting the right notes when it comes to its peripherals for apple because it's matching what's expected on the apple front of design with what they are producing and they add additional features which is extremely useful um, and I, I and I'll get to that in, in a minute so with regards to the build of the keyboard it's got a darker stain on the aluminium brushing that they're using I'm thinking that they did this because they want to be more with the iMac Pro dark space gray kind of look um, I don't mind it at all because I'm in it for the functionality not for the color matching um, the there is a feel to it that is not wrong and i appreciate that when logitech puts in that kind of heft to it um i can i think i can like you know use it as a as a blunt tool to hit someone who annoys me um and it does actually feel hefty um i like it um it matches my expectations as an apple user and it definitely matches my expectations as somebody who uses the Logitech MX3 mouse. It's exactly the same kind of luxurious feel. It has exactly that, that allure to it that I am uh, used to, right? Now, let's talk about the keyboard experience. It is different. It is markedly different. The style of the clicking on the switch is, uh, I feel that it travels more, but it has a softer touch. Uh, on the on the downswing um, and uh, the, I, I like that actual experience um, Logitech changed it up just a little a little bit uh, but it feels totally right um, they did a concave feature on each key and what that does is it feels like you are actually on the right space when you're typing on a keyboard that doesn't have a kind of concave feature to it it kind of feels kind of cold so them actually doing that actually gives me um a kind of tactile feedback on what is actually the keys that are for typing and the keys that are for functions um and that is something that i am it's something that i really appreciate in the thought that they put into it it feels right um, it, it feels different. It's not the same thing that I'm actually used to and I'm okay with that. I, I really am. I also want to mention something about the function keys that they included in this keyboard. Now at the top row, you will actually find the same function keys that you'll find in 
pretty much every other iMac keyboard uh, or Apple keyboard. Uh, you will see the brightness function, the layout, the grid, the um, play, pause, uh, increase volume button. But on the Logitech keyboard, on the right hand side, they included some shortcut keys. Now those keys come in very useful for people like me. Now, remember I said I did a lot of calculations, so they included, I don't know how they do it, but I think they talked to a lot of people. They talked about, they talked to a lot of users. And I think what they came back with was, there is no shortcut for a calculator. Uh, if you don't put the app on the dock or you're not uh, putting some kind of a shortcut for your usage of the calculator, it's, it's kind of hard to get to when you're using the Apple system. So what did they do? They put a button specifically to bring up the app. I really liked it because I use the calculator a lot. Um, they put in a uh, screenshot button right there within the keyboard. Makes things simple again. Now, of course, you can just do the control shift four or three to take the screenshot, but the fact that they put it there means that they understand that users do that often. Um, they also have a search function. Uh, uh, so if I were to go on a uh, Word document and then I key in, a, uh, I, I double click on a word and I click that button, it'll bring up the dictionary. Very useful because then I wouldn't have to look it up. Uh, uh, again, there are shortcuts for that, but they put it directly in. What else did they do? They put in a lock function within the keyboard. That doesn't exist in an Apple keyboard because technically you should have put a screensaver uh, that activates within a minute if you want to lock your computer. But just the fact that you can just press a button is it's nice. It, it, it's, it's good to have it there. And I, I, I really like uh, that edit functionality that they put in and thought into a keyboard. When we're talking about the keys, something that I have looked back on is the keys itself. Now, Apple, Apple's keyboards, uh, Apple's uh, keys are, have a very clean look about them. So they're white. Um, and, it, and I don't think it holds up to usage because when I'm looking at the Logitech MX keys and I'm looking at the old Apple keyboard that I'm using, I see a big difference and that difference is in usage and I, you'll be able to tell that there's usage on the buttons, right? You, you'll start getting into a kind of gray feel, kind of dirty look. Um, but because Logitech MX keys uses black keys, you don't have that problem anymore. All right. It's actually a wonderful idea. I think I understand now why gaming keyboards are black all the time. I never knew. I thought it was just a cool thing, but no, it has to do with not seeing your stains on the keyboard uh, on the keyboard itself and now I get it now I really really get it because I have been an Apple fanboy all the time I have not been using any other peripherals now it makes sense to me backlighting um, you won't find this on an Apple keyboard even on your Bluetooth options because it just don't exist um, and as I've mentioned with the Logitech Combo Touch it's something that I appreciate because when you're working sometimes you just want to be in the dark and you just want to be able to um, still see your keys and I can do that I can do that I mean I'm not gonna bring my iMac into my bedroom and start typing but when I'm in my own room and I'm typing and it gets dark the key light function comes on and there are two function keys which actually affect the how much light is being output through um, the keyboard itself um, usage is pretty cool it kind of fades up when you are activating it and fades down when you're not um, it's non-obtrusive, uh, it's not too bright, uh, but it's just enough for you to know where to place your fingers. And you see it a lot on a gaming computer, um, but uh, I'm sorry, you see it a lot on uh, gaming peripherals um, with a lot more functions than just fade up or fade down. But I'm not really into gaming so much as to want my keyboards to have all sorts of RGB, LED, uh, brouhaha. Um, this suits my perfect, uh, this suits my needs where it requires. It just need to see the keys and that's all I need. Although this is a Logitech MX keys for Mac, it does handle easy switching between Mac and gaming very easy. Now we, I told you that we were going to go to this and now we are. Now it used to be that I had one keyboard for my Mac because that was wired and I used to have one keyboard for my gaming rig and that's because it's just two different 
wired keyboards, right? I had no choice of the matter. But when the Logitech MX keys came in, I actually tried to key... I, I thought it wouldn't work because it's a Logitech MX keys for Mac. So I actually tried to uh, Bluetooth it to my gaming rig and it worked perfectly fine. I I was I was I was glad because now I have two machines that I can control both with my MX keys as well as my Logitech MX3. I have the perfect suite. I don't need anything else. And that's what makes life just a little bit more bearable. Uh, just a little bit easier. And that's the kind of thought that they went into it. Even though they made something specifically for the Mac, they made sure that it was cross compatible with the Windows. Damn good. Damn good for a peripheral company to have that kind of foresight because I'm sure they thought about it. I'm sure they thought about it and says, hey, let's ensure that it works across all Bluetooth, regardless of whether it's Apple or Mac. Now, of course, we all know Bluetooth is ubiquitous. It doesn't matter which platform you're using, but they put thought into it. They, even though it is for Mac, it works on a Windows. Perfectly fine. Uh, the only difference is in the in, in, in the function keys display, whether it's a command or or option or it, it, it doesn't really matter, but it works and that's what I really like about it. In terms of charging, the Logitech MX keys comes with a USB-C charging port. Um, and unfortunately for the battery life, I can't really tell you how long it can go, except that I don't have a problem with it. But that's because I have a habit of plugging in my devices once in a while um, to ensure they're fully charged. So I can't say for sure how long it goes. All I know is that it was convenient. But there is a particular indication light at the top right um, of the keyboard and it will start blinking if it's an issue. Um, the other place where you can find out about the battery life of the keyboard is at the Logi Options um, uh, application. Um, and when you key it in, it will actually show you right at the bottom, it'll show you where your battery stays as just like. Um, and uh, yeah, so I don't really have a problem with the battery. I never had a problem with the battery. Um, yep. Yeah. Buy this keyboard. Buy this keyboard. Buy the Logitech MX keys if you're already thinking about using or are already using the MX3 mouse. Buy this keyboard if you want a little bit more function from a Bluetooth keyboard from Apple. Buy this keyboard if you want to be able to use your Apple computer and then switch out to a gaming rig. Buy this keyboard if you want backlighting in your room. Buy this keyboard if you want to have a little bit more comfortable feel uh, when you're typing. You should buy this keyboard um, specifically because you won't stain your keyboard and, and no one will see it. Uh, buy this keyboard. I am buying this keyboard. I'm making sure that wherever I go, I have a Logitech MX keys hooked up with an MX3 mouse wherever I'm going because I'm so sold on this now. I, I, it's not even, I'm not even kidding. Apple should hire Logitech engineers in the future just to design their keyboards. I love it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you have another keyboard or mouse that you think is better that you want us to try out? Let us know. Thank you.